Paul arrives in Jerusalem around late spring of 58 AD, possibly near the time of the Feast of Pentecost in Acts 21:17. Arriving in Jerusalem, he visits James and delivers his offering from the Gentile churches, and soon afterwards goes to the temple with four Jewish Christian converts. Jews from Asia who hated Paul see him in the temple and very loudly accuse him of rebellion against Moses in Acts 21, 17 to 28. A riot soon erupts. The mob seizes Paul, drags him out of the temple, and begins to beat him. Romans quickly find out what's happening and dispatch troops to the temple area. Beating him stops when the Roman soldiers arrive on the scene in Acts 21, 30 to 32. The Romans bind him and begin to escort him to some nearby barrack. As he's led away, Paul requests that he be given permission to speak to the people in Acts 21, 33 to 40. Paul's speech to the mob in Acts 22, 1 to 21, though sincere, only fans the flames of resentment against him. He's led away to the Roman barracks where they want to scourge him for, to find out why the people rioted against him. Just before his scourging, he tells a Roman centurion that he is a Roman citizen so that the commander immediately cancels the scourging in Acts 22, 25, 29. The next day, the apostle is released from his bonds and brought before the Sanhedrin to have them determine what caused the tumult in the temple in Acts 22, 30. His defense before the Jewish religious leaders accomplishes little, Acts 23, 1 to 10. The night after his hearing, he has a vision from Jesus standing next to him, assuring him that he will make it to Rome, and Acts 23, 11. Some 40 zealous Jews conspire with the chief priests and elders to have him murdered as he travels to meet them a second time. Paul's sister's son hears about the plot against his uncle and informs the Romans in Acts 23, 12 to 22. Paul is soon escorted out of the city by night with 200 Roman soldiers in Acts 23, verse 23 to 24, who take him to Caesarea where his case can be heard. When he arrives in Caesarea, Governor Felix decides to keep him in the Praetorium of Herod, Acts 23:35. Paul is kept as a Roman prisoner in Caesarea from early summer of 58 AD to the early autumn of 60 AD, nearly three years. In Caesarea, he defends himself several times while he is a prisoner in Acts 24. He is found to have done nothing worthy of imprisonment or death but in the course of his trials, he appeals to Caesar so that he's not released back to the Jews. Then in the autumn of 60 AD, Paul, along with several other prisoners, board a ship bound for Rome. The prisoners are escorted to Rome by a Roman centurion named Julius in Acts 27, 1-2. From Caesarea, Paul, still a prisoner, sails to Sidon with Luke and Aristarchus of Acts 27, 1-2. From Sidon, the ship hugs the coast near Antioch. And the Roman provinces of Cilicia and Pamphylia before arriving in Myra. Myra, they board another ship bound for Italy, but because of the winds, however, the ship is unable to sail directly to Italy. Instead, the ship hugs the coast until it arrives near Snidus, where it turns southward towards the island of Crete in Acts 27, 3-7. They pass Cape Salmoni, or Sideros, and then on to Lasea on the island of Crete near the city of Fairhaven where they spent much time in Acts 27, 7 to 13. After a difficult journey, the ship anchors at the Cretan city of Fairhaven, although Paul warns Julius not to sail the Mediterranean during his dangerous time of the year, September to October, the centurion disregards his advice and has the ship set sail for the western part of the island and the harbor of Phoenix in Acts 27, 9 through 12. But en route, the ship encounters a fierce storm which drives it out to sea. The storm forces them to lose control, blowing them past the island of Clauda or Gavdos, but no way to stop. 
The strong winds and overcast skies which hide the sun and moon caused the ship to lose all control and disorientation and throwing things overboard to, to not go down in the sea, they aimlessly tossed about in the sea for about two weeks, from Acts 27, 13 to 27. Finally, in the fall of 60 AD, eventually the ship drifts near the island of Malta, where it is run aground. All 276 people on board ship abandon ship. They grab whatever parts of the floating wreckage they can and make their way to the island. Acts 27, 37 to 44. All those on the ship arrived safely in Malta, fulfilling God's promise that no life would be lost in Acts 27, 22 to 25. Paul stays three months on Malta where he is treated kindly by the natives. And in his short stay on the island, he miraculously survives a bite from a poisonous snake, heals the father of the island's governor and many others in Acts 28, one to 10. He then boards a ship wintering at the island and sets sail for Syracuse on the island of Sicily. And then finally to Regium, the southern tip of Italy. They eventually arrive at the Italian port city Uteoli on the western coast of Italy, where he stays for one week with Christians in the area, Acts 28, 11 through 14. He is then taken to Rome on the well-known Appian Way Road in Acts 28, 14 to 16, and the Appi Forum. This is an ancient post station or market town on the Via Appia, 43 miles southeast of Rome where they stopped on their march to Rome, and believers from Rome came this far to meet Paul when they heard that he had landed at Puteoli. From the late winter of 61 AD to the early spring of 63 AD, Paul is Im imprisoned in Rome. Well, Rome ruled the world from England to North Africa, from Syria to Spain. It is estimated that one in every four people on the globe were under the Roman rule. Rome had a population of about a million inhabitants, which would be the largest city in the Western civilization until the 19th century. One in every three persons in Rome was a slave of some sort. It's hard to imagine the power, luxury, and intimidation and overwhelming odds against anything opposing the Roman rule and pagan gods. Yet Paul was fearless. It was so frightful that 2 Timothy 4.17 says that no one supported Paul and everyone deserted him. Although Paul was a prisoner in Rome, he was allowed to live by himself in a rented home guarded only by a Roman soldier in Acts 28:16. He is able, therefore, to receive visitors and continues to preach the gospel and to speak with Jewish religious leaders in Rome in Acts 28, 17 to 31. In about 62 AD, Paul wrote Ephesians before Timothy came to him, according to Ephesians 1.1. 1, 1. Also in 62 AD, Paul wrote Philippians while he was a prisoner, according to Philippians 1, 7 and 4, 23. And he was also with Timothy in chapter 1, verse 1. Paul wrote Colossians from prison, according to Colossians 4, 18, at about 62 AD when he was accompanied by Timothy and a fellow prisoner, Aristarchus, in chapter 4, verse 10. Paul with Timothy wrote Philemon from prison as well in 63 AD in Philemon 1. The serious persecution of Christians by the Romans, especially by Nero, would begin after 64 AD, especially in the Colosseums, which would be just after Paul's release from prison. Paul never quit from the day he met the living Savior. His tireless efforts set the pattern for pioneer evangelism regardless of the cost. The story of the Acts of the Spirit continue leading and empowering Christ's followers to reach out to a lost world that still has never heard of the Savior.